Hello and welcome to this video from C6 Chemistry Out There on Methods of Alcohol Production by me, Mr. Clay. Right, the aim of this video is that you should be able to describe how to make ethanol by fermentation. You should also be able to describe how to make ethanol through the hydration of ethene. You should be able to evaluate these two procedures, deciding which one's best, and also to uh, use the given formula for alcohols to predict the molecular formula and display formula for any alcohol, particularly the first five. So here is an alcohol. This is ethanol. We know it's ethanol because it has two carbons, giving it the prefix eth. The bit that makes it an alcohol is this section here. This is the OH group. It doesn't matter where that OH group is, essentially, it's still an alcohol. Um, all alcohols are given the suffix anol. So this is eth anol. If it had one carbon, it'd be methanol, uh, three carbons propanol, four carbons butanol, five carbons pentanol. So here are those first five alcohols. As stated, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, and pentanol and their displayed formulas. The general formula for an alcohol is the number of carbons gives you the number of hydrogens as long as you multiply it by 2 and add 1 and it also has an OH group. Essentially that's the same as an alkene uh, sorry, as an alkane with one of the hydrogens being replaced with an OH group which you can see here is pretty much what you, what you have. We've got a chain of carbons that is saturated with hydrogens with the exception of the one OH group at one end. So what's ethanol used for? Um, as well as the obvious one which is people use it in drinks, um, it's also used for a variety of different things. Modern cars can use it, it can be used as a fuel, it can be used as a solvent, it can be used in perfumes and aftershaves, it can be used as a disinfectant, it can be used in cleaning products, it's got a myriad of different uses. Okay, the first process, fermentation. Fermentation uses yeast. The yeast, in anaerobic conditions, converts glucose into carbon dioxide and ethanol. It must be anaerobic. We've obviously got a few problems here. That should read C6H12O6 for the glucose, two carbon dioxides and two ethanols. C2H5OH. So we can do this in a lab, and when we do it in a lab, you put the yeast and the sugar concent uh, solution here, and you need to make sure that it is in an airtight container. That's the reason that this delivery tube goes into lime water. That serves a second purpose because you can use the lime water to check for the production of carbon dioxide. Two key things you need to make sure that you maintain. Temperature. Between 25 and 50. If it's too cold, then the rate of reaction will be too slow because of uh, collision. Well, you can explain this using collision theory. And if the reaction, the rate, the temperature is too high, then the reaction will stop. This is because it's a biological process, and the enzymes involved in this biological process will denature if the temperature is too high. Also, it needs to be un under anaerobic conditions, which means without oxygen. So we need to make sure that no air is allowed to get into this container. If that happens, instead of getting ethanol that we want, we'll end up with ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is basically vinegar, and that's the reason why if alcohol is left out, like wine or something like that, then what you end up making, wine will go off and it will get a vinegary taste because the alcohol is converted into ethanoic acid. After this process, we need to separate ethanol from the mixture using fractional distillation. This, the reason for this is because we get low purity from fermentation. But luckily water and ethanol have different boiling points. Ethanol is 78, water is 100. So when you distill them, the ethanol evaporates, leaving the water behind. The second process is the hydration of ethene. 
This is ethene, C2H4. It reacts with water, hence the word hydration, to form ethanol. This has to be done at high pressure. It also has to be done at high temperature and it requires a catalyst which is hot phosphoric acid. Also, the ethene that's used in this process comes from crude oil. So what we have here is an unsustainable process. Crude oil will run out, it's a finite resource. But you get very, very high purity and a very, very high atom economy and percentage yield. For this reason, if you want ethanol for a chemical industry and chemical processes, then hydration of ethene is the one that's used. Fermentation of sugar is much more sustainable. It uses sugars, sugars that are grown from plant. That is a disadvantage because um, you have to replace food crops with crops that are used to make bioethanol, which uh, causes increased food prices and is in particular a pressure in the developing world. But it's a very, very, very much a cheaper process because it's done at low temperature, low pressure. There is no catalyst involved. Um, however, we do get low purity. And because of this low purity, we need to uh, filter and distill the product. And the atom economy is only 51%. So in summary, the general formula for alcohols is CN H2N plus 1 OH. You can make it by fermentation by yeast in anaerobic conditions or you can do or you can hydrate ethene at high temperature and high pressure. Hydration of ethene gives you a very high purity and a high atom, atom economy but it's unsustainable and has high energy demands whereas fermentation has low energy demands but it is sustainable however we don't get high purity and we get a low atom economy. It's done so, so its production is basically cheap and sustainable. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this, please see me, I'm Mr. Clee, or any of you science teachers.